arguing for it. I'm just saying no one has been or will be able to stop the endless movement of uh, rural urban migration, particularly rural metropolitan migration. So this, uh, these different um, um, arguments that we have found to lead to major metropolitan concentration combine to uh, fit the, the, the process of spatial concentration uh, and generating one of the most important industries in most major metropolitan areas is real estate and construction, which is, of course, the second derivative from the, all these concentration activities, but is the fundamental uh, economic sector later on. And more and more investment goes into that. Why? Because if all that is valuable comes into a metropolitan area, and more and more people and activities concentrate in that metropolitan area, of course, what becomes scarce is the land. And therefore, the first who were there either uh, sell the land or um, to, to some other people or real estate companies buy the land and uh, organize the uh, distribution of this land with increasingly high prices. With one typical assumption, real estate prices will go up forever. That's the fundamental assumption, correct? Well, we'll see in, in a moment. But that has been the assumption everywhere. Um, rich California, number one value added industry in Los Angeles or in the San Francisco metropolitan area, real estate and construction. Number one, much more than all, all the Hollywood movies, all the electronic industry, everything. Real estate and construction, number one activity in creative Barcelona, real estate and construction, and so on and so on. Uh, New York, same thing. Increasingly connected to finance. So is finance, real estate, and construction is the same system. Not all finance is this, but it's directly connected because the ability to, for people to buy any property is related to the ability to obtain a loan. No one, only, only some mafiosi, not all, because they are not all rich, can pay cash. Uh, but um, most activities are related to the finance system through the mortgage system that becomes collateral. You, you know all this. I'm simply putting things together so that the things become uh, more um, clearly organized. Now, this, the practical implication of all this an analysis is that we must plan for a relentless metropolitan growth throughout the planet. That's no way back from that entire metropoli metropolitanization of the planet. And this, of course, this spatial form of our time, which is the, the, uh, the metropolitan region, creates all kinds of problems, what I call the, the urban contradictions of our time. Creates a major environmental crisis, both global and local. It contributes to the deterioration of the livability of the planet. By the way, not to the planet itself. It's us in the planet. The planet is OK. Actually, it will be much better without us. Uh, <laughs> but but it's, 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 it's the, our livability in the planet is in danger. And the main, the main sources of environmental destruction are these precisely these major metropolitan areas that happen to be the engines of economic growth and the engines of wealth creation and of power enforcement. Second, of course, these areas. Um, concentrate poverty and social exclusion in an unprecedented scale, which is highly linked to uh, the growing threats for ecological catastrophes. Pandemics of all kinds are emerging from, from there. Of course, you are in the middle of one of the biggest pandemics uh, in, in, in human history. But that's only the beginning. All the epidemiologists showed that the conditions of metropolitan concentration with no uh, basic hygienic condition, with no water, uh, with no sewage, et cetera, et cetera, adding billions and billions and billions to this particular pattern of urbanization creates pandemics which are, of course, not limited to the poor. And the same way that 
AIDS became serious uh, in the world when it was not only a matter of gays and blacks, uh, the moment in which pandemics uh, become a danger because you know the viruses don't stop uh, at the door of, of a rich neighborhood, uh, that's becoming a major issue and a, a, a challenge to our current pattern of life. But there's more than that. Is the loss of public space reduced to commercial space and privatized shopping centers. The loss of shared identity in the uh, anonymity of the large metropolitan uh, regions. And therefore, the rise of violence and uh, the emergence of the defensive space. Everybody retains behind uh, fortified gate communities or uh, turf uh, in the poor neighborhood defended by territorial gangs. Um, gangs is simply the fragmentation of society to the limit. And the notion that my identity goes from this street to this street, and if you cross that, I shoot you. Uh, because that's the last thing. They have some control over something, is control over territory. And remember that our primal instinct coming from the reptiles is territorial. Uh, and the defensiveness of a space is a fundamental uh, expression and source of violence. But it's also a dramatic functional disorganization in these metropolitan regions, uh, particularly in mobility. Mobility has become uh, a, a recipe for immobility. The, 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 the notion of, of relying on the automobile in a, in a planet in which first, many people don't simply have the possibility to the automobile to start with, but second, uh, in a planet in which the, um, the, the metro these metropolitan regions have a limited uh, amount of a space, and therefore of a space for the automobile, and therefore the actual capacity of the urban transportation system to manage these flows and the demand of transportation based on these primitive systems, it has broken down. Uh, we are in a permanent gridlock. Um, the most here, uh, or in, in, in Los Angeles, you have uh, this notion of people spending, buying these hugely expensive, luxurious automobiles, able to go 200 kilometers per hour, actually going slower than a bicycle, <laughs> or for that matter, than a, 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 a horse, uh, a, a horse carriage. Uh, all kind of very good analysis have been done on, on this matter. So um, to the point that um, in, a, in a, an art, recent article that I will give you the reference because this is it's online and it's fun. Um, uh, with uh, an architect uh, collaborated, collaborating with me in Los Angeles, we have proposed, among other things, uh, to build a system of uh, using Obama money for infrastructure. Remember, Obama is giving lots of money for infrastructure now. Which kind of infrastructure? Well, we propose the notion of a bicycle freeways on top of the current freeway system. So you don't use more land, you simply elevate, you, you design nice little holes so that the sun can go still for, for the, those who insist on cars. And then our calculations is that bicycles on this freeway with a nice open space in the middle, green, cafes, and everything, where you can stop from time to time, go much faster than the cars down. So we have to start using our imagination to go through, and, and there's nothing stupid in terms of that, because if we are going to use money to broaden the freeways, why to broaden more freeways would be more cars, which ultimately would be bigger uh, jumps. Uh, so some other innovations should start being provided. For the moment, there is no mobility in this system. The old idea of the land use transportation pattern, that is that the fundamental thing, what determines the inability to manage this is that you cannot distribute activities uh, in, 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 in such a way that you always have to move from somewhere to somewhere because of the monofunctionality of the location patterns. Now, uh, therefore, to have smaller, more integrated, um, multifunctional units throughout the metropolitan region is what eliminates most of these flows, but it's too late. We, we cannot redo. The, these are the theories of the 1970s to connect the land use transportation system in a way that you reduce transportation needs. But at this point, we cannot reconstruct 
all the huge metropolitan areas that we have done. So we have to deal with the decisive gridlock. Now, you know that some of the technocratic solutions is, well, uh, let people pay for going into the places that they shouldn't go. You know what? People don't necessarily love traffic jams. Uh, if, they, if they go to where they go, it's because they need it for work, they need it for, for uh, the school, they need it for shopping. There's no way they can avoid that. Alternative mass transit, yes. But which kind of mass transit? Usually mass transit is to decongest middle class professional traffic from one point of the city to downtown. But it's not for the majority of people. The majority of people in the developing world survive on <coughs> collective taxes, which are flexible, as you do here, are flexible. You can, they can be, but this is absolutely wasteful in terms of the system, in terms of the people's resources, and in terms of the people's time. But it's the only way out of the current mess. So it's ad hoc solutions which are deepening the crisis rather than solving it. The fundamental contradiction is that, now for one line of theory, uh, what I called years ago the space of flows, that is this, the global space constructed their own communication and technological uh, avenues, uh, dominate the space of places, that is the space where people live. Why? Because cities around the world, to attract wealth, they have to invest everything they have in creating the conditions for capital investment and for attracting uh, international trade, international capital, international high talent, etc. So at being a node, one of these nodes that I was referring to, in the dominant space of flows, and telling the locals, say, this will first have to obtain the wealth, which is always from somewhere else. And then this will trickle down. This will trickle down to you. Well, we cannot start with you because we don't have the money. So we have to first get the money and then will be your time. Of course, the time never arrives because uh, you always have to update your telecommunication system, build your airport, uh, create a new event to keep going in the global node. Uh, so uh, if, if Barcelona created the Olympics and then when they ran out of Olympics, uh, they wanted another Olympics and they told them, no, you cannot. And, <laughs> and then they, they invented something called the Forum of Culture that was a complete mess and nobody knew what, what that was. But just to keep going into this notion of attracting more and more activities, people to convention centers, to international hotels, etc., etc., until boom, the bubble bursts. Uh, because eventually you cannot fly so high without relating to the local conditions of the local population. And then, so what is the usual solution for that? Is well, segregate the city. You have a great practice in that sense here. Uh, you have the, what some of my students say, the visitor city, and then the, the other city. The city where people live, and the city that people visit. And you have, you have these two cities going on everywhere in the world. And I also, I always, uh, not for, for you not to feel bad, I always keep my poor Barcelona pounding on it because that means in Barcelona, the Ramblas, the famous Ramblas, are a theme park now. There are no Barcelona people there. Uh, there are only tourists. And bye-bye Ramblas. I mean, it's the same space, but it's not anymore a local living space because to, Barcelona people have deserted that space, which is the, the, the only space for tourists and, 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 and some clowns that uh, go around there. Um, all this, by the way, has another major contradiction, which is an economic contradiction. Increasingly, as I said, the economies of these met, mega metropolitan regions depend on the vitality of the number one industry, which is the combination, again, between real estate, finance, and construction. Now, this just happens to be one of the most volatile types of uh, uh, industrial sectors, as we just saw in the crisis. The crisis we are in, the global crisis of capitalism nowadays, with its ups and downs, started in the mortgage market, and it started on the basis of the assumption that people would always have enough money and enough capacity 